Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Education World Gurdaspur, one of the famous institute in the city of Gurdaspur, Punjab. The center is uh, prodigally taking its uh, initiative for upliftment of uh, the education, especially in the competitive examinations. And uh, today, our center, Education World, has launched uh, NEET 2021 preparatory module with the title name as Neat Brahmastra and today I will uh, discuss one of the section of that particular preparatory module concerning with the zoology part. So let's uh, deal with the same and I hope this proves to be very much useful to the Neat aspirants. So in the NEET 2021, we can have 50 questions of botany and uh, 50 questions of zoology. And out of these uh, 50 questions, 5 questions are optional due to the relaxation given in the COVID pandemic. So let's uh, have the practice of some of the important questions in the zoology section. So the first question in front of you is, Important characteristic that hemicordates share with the chordates is Option A, ventral tubular nerve cord Then the option B is the pharynx with the gill slits Option C is the pharynx with the gills without gill slits And option D is absence of nerve cord So if we see the kingdom animalia classification So hemicordates constitute uh, Intermediate category between known codates as well as the codates. When the hemicodates were discovered, they were added among codata group because it was assumed that they have the node code. But later on, it was uh, reported that the structure that was considered node code is actually a hard structure which is present in the anterior part of the body, which is wrapped with the stomo code. So hemicodates as well as the codates, they share some characters because hemicodata group is nearer to the codata group in the animal tree. So the similarity which we see among the hemicodates as well as the codates is that is the pharynx with the gill slits. This is a correct option, pharynx with the gill slits because normally the codates they are having the gill slits, they are having the tail, they are having the uh, dorsal hollow nervous system and ventral heart. So hemicodates, they share this feature with the codates, that is they have the pharynx with the gill slits. Then the second question, which among these is the correct combination of aquatic mammals? We know that mammalia is also one of the diverse group and uh, on the basis of uh, prevalence, the mammals can be categorized as aquatic mammals, then uh, rustial mammals, then flying mammal. So in the aquatic mammals, we can give the examples such as whale, dolphin, and sea. Okay. In the first option, uh, dolphin and seal, they are compatible with the question asked. But the trigon, it is a stingray, it is a cartilaginous fish. Likewise, in the C option, the trigon make the C option invalid. And in the option D, shark, which is also the cartilaginous fish, it is not the mammal. So hence, the correct option would be option B. Whale is the aquatic mammal, dolphin is also the aquatic mammal, and seal is also one of the aquatic mammals. And the third question is, which of the following represent order of horse? The order of the horse is Parisodectala, that is, they are having the old toe in their limbs. And uh, the other option, option B, C, and D, they indicate the various species of the horse which are available. And Quadi, this is the family of the horse, it is not the order, order is Parisodectala, that is, they are having old toe. Then the question number 4, in case of poriferance, the spongioseal is lined with the flagellated cells called oscula, coanocytes, mesenchymal cells or osteum. So if we analyze uh, 
the biology of this question then we see in the porifera which are the diploblastic animals they have the two layers in the body wall outer layer of the body wall is known as dermal layer inner layer is known as gastrol layer the dermal layer is lined with the specialized cell which are known as the pinacocytes whereas the gastrol layer is lined with a special type of cells which are known as polar cells or guanocytes so hence we can say in case of the poriferous the spongocele which is present in it to the body wall it is lined with the flagellated cells which are called as guanocytes and guanocytes they have collar like structure which on the basis of that they are driving their name as collar cells and they have a long flagella also uh, whose lashing causes causing the production of the water currents and helps in the circulation of fluid in the body of the sponge and hence the correct option is guanocyte the other option if we see if we analyze oscula oscula is the excellent aperture in case of the sponge mesenchymal cells these are the cells which are found in the mesenchyme layer that is in between the two layers of the body wall there is mesenchyme which is not a true uh, we can say that uh, uh middle layer and uh, the ostia ostia they are the inhalant pores in case of the body of the sponge the correct option which is compatible with the question is option b guanocytes then question number 5 is choose the correct statement all mammals are viviparous uh then all cyclostome don't possess jaws and paired fins all reptiles have a three chambered heart all pisces they have gills covered by an operculum if we analyze uh, the various options given so all mammals are viviparous then we can have we can say that this option is incorrect why because we can have the some mammals which are egg-laying technically the egg-laying mammals are known as prototherians so prototherians they are not uh, viviparous they are oviparous as they lay the eggs hence the first statement is now incorrect the second one is uh, all cyclostomes don't possess jaws and paired fins cyclostomes that is uh, the animals with the circular mouths and in this uh, uh, class we can give the example of uh, lamprey okay instead of instead of teeth they have a buccal mass and over the buccal mass the teeth they are embedded and even the jaws are not there okay they belong to the they belong to the group a ganatha okay and they don't have the paired fins as well the second option is in fact the correct option all cyclostomes don't possess jaw as well as the paired fin c option is all reptile have a three chambered heart again it is incorrect because we know that the crocodile is having three and a half chambered heart then all pisces have gill covered by the operculum pisces mean fishes we know that the sharks or the cartilaginous fishes uh, gills they are not covered with the operculum and hence the option d is also incorrect the correct option in this question is option b question number 6 says in male cockroach sperms are stored in which part of the reproductive system so we know that in case of male cockroach the sperms they are stored in the special vesicles which are formed in the body which are known as a seminal vesicles mushroom glands are the accessory reproductive glands in the in the cockroach which play important role in the formation of oothica testes they are the male gonads and vas deferens that is a male genital duct so hence the question uh, is asking us about the structure which stores the sperms in case of male cockroach and that is the correct option is seminal vesicles then the question number 7 is smooth muscles are we know that the muscles they are of three different types one are called as a skeletal muscles the second are known as a smooth muscles the third one they are known as the cardiac muscles the smooth muscles they are uh, usually <coughs> spindle shaped in outline or they are fusi form in outline and they are involuntary in nature and they don't have the pattern of bands and interbands that is they are non striated so hence the option which is uh, correct uh, in the given four options a b c d is a that is a smooth muscle fibers they are involuntary they are fusi form and they are non striated 
the second option becomes invalid because the voluntary feature is added smooth muscle fibers are involuntary they are not multinucleated they are not cylindrical this is a feature of skeletal muscles then third option c again striated word which is added here makes this option ineligible and uh, option d voluntary spindle shaped and ininucleated again the word voluntary which is added here makes the option d invalid or incorrect hence the correct option is option a smooth muscles they are involuntary fusiform and non striated then question number 8 if we see which cells of crypts of liverkun secrete antibacterial lysine so crypts of liverkun these are the intestinal glands which are present in the region of small intestine and uh, the crypts of liverkun <laughs> secrete anti bacterial lysozyme with the help of cells which are called as panic cells the correct option is panic cell in this case and uh, the other options if we talk about other options that is the chymogen cells these cells are known as peptic cells they are present in the stomach and uh, they secrete uh, the enzyme pepsin they are localized in the stomach area they are not found in the intestine then likewise the option c couple of cells they are present in the liver they are phagocytic cells and argentafil cells they are the cells which are found in the intestinal glands especially in the crypts of liverkun but they don't secrete the lysozyme they secrete hormone which is called as secretin and 5 hydroxy tryptamine so hence the correct option is a then question number 9 which the following options best represents the enzyme composition of pancreatic juice the pancreatic juice is having a number of enzymes like pancreatic lipase pancreatic amylase trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen procarboxypeptidase and uh, in these options uh, we can see option c is compatible with the question that is the lipase is there pancreatic lipase in the pancreatic juice pancreatic amylase is there in the pancreatic juice trypsinogen is there in the pancreatic juice and procarboxypeptidase is also there in the pancreatic juice trypsinogen and uh, procarboxypeptidase these are protein digesting enzymes amylase is the starch digesting enzyme and lipase is the lipid digesting enzyme and all of these uh, enzymes they are reported in the pancreatic juice okay option a is invalid incorrect because pepsin is secreted by the stomach area the stomach glands likewise uh, in this case uh, option b pepsin and renin they are secreted by the stomach mucosa they are not secreted by the pancreas and in the option d likewise the renin renin it is secreted by the stomach it is not secreted by the pancreas so hence uh, the correct option is c pancreatic juice is having lipase amylase trypsinogen and procarboxypeptide then question number 10 A baby boy aged two years is admitted to play school and passes through a dental checkup. The dentist observed that the boy had twenty teeth, which teeth were absent. So we know that in case of uh, children, premolar teeth are absent. So hence the correct option is B, premolars. Okay. Uh, children have the dental formula two one zero two. Divided by two one zero two into two. I want to say uh, they don't have the premolar teeth in their dental sac. Then question number eleven. Which hormone do stimulate the production of pancreatic juice and bicarbonate? So primarily the pancreatic juice it is uh, secreted by the pancreas when the pancreas is stimulated by the hormone which is called as a cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin. Okay. And the bicarbonate it is also secreted in the pancreatic juice when the secretin hormone is there. So hence the correct option is C, cholecystokinin and secretin hormone. If we talk about the other options like angiotensin and epinephrine, angiotensin and epinephrine, angiotensin it is produced by the liver, uh, and epinephrine hormone is produced by adrenal gland. Gastrin hormone is secreted by the gastric mucosa. Insulin is secreted by the pancreas. In the D option, likewise, insulin it is secreted by the pancreas and glucagon hormone. It is secreted by the pancreas also. Uh, but these uh, hormones uh, uh, 
uh, in the option A, option B and option D, they are not meant for production of pancreatic juice and bicarbonates, they don't regulate the production of pancreatic juice and bicarbonate. Cholecystokinin and secretin. Cholecystokinin hormone, it is responsible for contraction of the gallbladder, release of bile from the gallbladder as well as uh, production of bile. Okay. And uh, by the pancreas also. And uh, secretin hormone is responsible for the production of bicarbonate ion in the pancreatic juice. Then question number 12, which of the following guards the opening of the hepatopancreatic duct into the duodenum? So we know that uh, the liver and pancreas they open together with the help of a joint duct into the small intestine area, duodenum. And there is a valve which will guard that particular duct opening into the duodenum and that uh, uh, valve is basically referred to the name of sphincter of OD. Okay. Pyloric sphincter, pyloric sphincter is present in the stomach area. Seminular valves, they are present in the heart. Ileocecal valve, they are present at the junction of small and large intestine. Hence, the correct option is uh, option B, sphincter of OD. Then, question number 13. In the stomach, gastric acid is secreted by, we know that in case of the stomach, the gastric acid is uh, uh, primarily secreted by the parietal cells. The parietal cells, they are present in the gastric glands and they secrete the HCL. The peptic cells, they will secrete the pepsin hormone, okay? And the gastrin secreting cells, they will secrete the gastrin and acidic cells, they are responsible for uh, uh, secretion of a little bit of acid and the parietal cells, they are primarily responsible for the production of gastric acid or the gastric acid. The lungs, they are made up of air-filled sacs, alveoli, they not collapse even after forceful expiration because of inspiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, expiratory reserve volume or residual volume. That is the question is very simple. We know that the lungs, they are having the alveoli, the functional units of the lungs are there and they don't class even after forceful expiration. The reason beyond this is, the reason beyond this is because the lungs they are having, the lungs they are having the residual volume of gases within them and hence they don't get collapsed even after forceful expiration. The residual volume refers to the volume of air that remains inside the lungs even after maximum forceful expiration. Question number 15. The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli of lungs is the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli of the lungs is primarily more than that in the blood. That is more than that in the blood. The partial pressure of the oxygen in the alveolar air is 104 millimeter of mercury, whereas it is 40 millimeter of mercury in the deoxygenated blood and 95 millimeter of mercury in the oxygenated blood. So hence, uh, the partial pressure of the oxygen in the alveolar the lungs is more than that in the blood. Question number 16: Lungs don't collapse between breaths, and some air always remains in the lungs, which can never be expired because of it is because of uh, negative intrapleural pressure pulling at the lung walls. This is due to the negative intrapleural pressure pulling at the lung walls. Intrapleural pressure is the pressure of the air within the pleural cavity and intrapleural pressure is always negative which acts like a suction to keep the lungs inflated and prevent them from collapsing. The negative intrapleural pressure is due to the three main factors, surface tension of the alveolar fluid, elasticity of the lungs, elasticity of thoracic wall. And normally, uh, there is a difference between the intrapleural as well as the intrapulmonary pressure which is called as a transpulmonary pressure. The transpulmonary pressure creates the suction to keep the lungs inflated. If there is no pressure difference, there is no suction and lungs will collapse to hence we can say the correct option is option B. Question number 17. The reduction in the pH of the blood will, it will uh, decrease the affinity of hemoglobin with oxygen. Okay, reduction in the pH of the blood will decrease the affinity of the hemoglobin with oxygen because when there is a reduction in the pH, we know that the carbon dioxide level would be higher. 
because when the dissolution of the carbon dioxide is there in the blood then we can have the carbonic acid formation of the carbonic acid reduces the ph of the blood and uh, this indicates that the carbon dioxide is more in the blood and oxygen is lesser so we know that the carbon dioxide affinity for the hemoglobin is quite more in comparison to the oxygen hence correct option is a then question number 18 name the chronic respiratory disorder caused mainly by the cigarette smoking so primarily the disease which is uh, caused by chronic respiratory disorder caused by the cigarette smoking it is known as emphysema okay and emphysema is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease copd it is caused due to the cigarette smoking and it is an inflammation or abnormal distension of bronchioles or alveoli of the lungs which causes irreversible distension and loss of elasticity of the lungs primarily then question number 19 adult rbc are inhalated which of the following statement is most appropriately explanation of this that is they don't need to reproduce they are the somatic cell they don't metabolize and uh, uh, likewise uh, we can say all the internal spaces available for oxygen transportation so which option is correct in this case in this case the option d is correct only for all the internal spaces available for oxygen transportation because we know that the rbc they commuted hemoglobin and they lost the organelles mature rbc lost its organelles in order to commute the maximum amount of hemoglobin and it is functionally correlated with the oxygen transport only four is correct then question number 20 the hepatic portal vein drains blood to the liver from the hepatic portal vein drains blood to the liver from stomach and intestine that is in this question both the options are correct option a is also correct option c is also correct because uh, primarily the hepatic portal veins uh, drains uh, blood uh, uh, drains blood from uh, the alimentary canal and blood enters the liver from the two sources from the hepatic artery it get oxygenated blood and from the hepatic portal vein it receives the deoxygenated blood blood in the hepatic artery comes from the aorta blood in the hepatic portal vein comes directly from the intestine containing newly absorbed nutrient and stomach then question number 21 name the blood cells whose reduction in number can cause clotting disorder leading to excessive loss of blood from the body and uh, we know that the cells are the thrombocytes okay due to the loss of the thrombocytes the blood clotting disorders can take place then the serum differ from blood in having in lacking globulins lacking albumins lacking clotting factors lacking antibodies so in this case uh, we can say uh, option c is correct because the serum is not having the clotting factor into it then question number 23 blood pressure in the pulmonary artery the blood pressure in the pulmonary artery is uh, more than that in the pulmonary vein then question number 24 in mammals which blood vessel would normally carry the largest amount of urea in a mammal which blood vessel would carry largest amount of urea so we know that uh, primarily uh, the hepatic vein hepatic vein option a is correct hepatic vein carries the largest amount of urea urea is formed in the liver hepatic vein transports liver to deoxygenate the blood to the heart for oxygenation along with that it is carrying the urea then question number 25 which one of the following animals has two separate circulatory system the answer is a whale option a it is having the two separate circulatory system one is systemic circulation and second is pulmonary circulation the other one is shark it is having single blood circulation okay and uh, in case of uh, other one also uh, the blood circulation is not uh, double it is a single blood circulation or mixed blood circulation then uh, 26 questions question number 26 doctors use stethoscope to hear the sounds produced during each cardiac cycle the second sound is heard when option a av node receive signal from sa node av node AV valves open up 
ventricular valves vibrate due to the gushing in of blood from the atria. Stem and inner valves close down after the blood flows into the vessels from the ventricles. So, for your kind information, the beating of the heart produces two different sounds. One is called as the first heart sound or lub, and uh, second is the second heart sound, which is basically denoted by dub. And uh, first heart sound is produced by the closure of bicuspid and tricuspid valves, whereas uh, the second heart sound is produced by closure of semi lunar valves, which are basically present at the base of lunar trunk and aorta. Then erythropoiesis starts in. The question is very important. Erythropoiesis starts in. Erythropoiesis means formation of RBC. So primarily we see the erythropoiesis starts in the red bone marrow. Erythropoiesis starts in the red bone marrow. And within the red bone marrow, there are found the stem cells which are known as a pro erythroblast or erythroblast. These cells divide and will produce the RBC. Then question number 28, which one of the following is correct? Lymph is equal to plasma plus RBC plus WBC. It is incorrect option because in the lymph RBC are not there. Then the blood is equal to plasma plus RBC plus WBC plus platelets. And uh, in this case, uh, we can say the option B is correct because we know that the blood is having the fluid plasma and corpuscles in the form of RBC, WBC and platelets. Then serum is uh, plasma minus the clotting factor, hence option D is also incorrect. And option C, plasma is written here, blood minus lymphocytes, not only lymphocytes, blood minus all the corpuscles, hence option B is correct. Question number 29, blood pressure in the mammalian aorta is maximum during blood pressure in mammalian aorta is maximum during it is maximum during the systole of the left ventricle the option a is correct because we know that the wall of the left ventricle is thicker in comparison to the right ventricle and when the left ventricle contraction takes place then uh, vigorous systolic pressure will be generated then question number 30, person with the blood group AB is considered as universal recipient because he has both A and B antigen on the RBC but no antibodies in the plasma. Both A and B antibodies in the plasma, no antigen on the RBC and no antibody in the plasma. Both A and B antigens in the plasma but no antibody. We know that if a person is having blood group AB, he is having both A and B antigens on the RBC but there are no antibodies are there in the plasma. Option A is correct. Then uh, question number 31, a decrease in the blood pressure volume will not cause the release of ANF. Option A is ANF, that is atrial natri uretic factor, B is aldosterone and uh, C is ADH, D is REN. So this is uh, one of the very important question which uh, has been uh, asked earlier in the NEET examinations that is a decrease in the blood pressure volume will not cause the release of that is not responsible for causing the release of ANF ANF is atrial natri uretic factor it is secreted by the heart atrial part aldosterone this is a hormone uh, which is uh, secreted by adrenal gland ADH it is uh, secreted by the pituitary and renin it is basically produced by the kidney the question is degrees in the blood pressure or volume will not cause the release of the answer is in this case if we analyze it very minutely so in this case uh, we can see uh, this atrial natri uretic factor will not be liberated when there is a decrease in the blood pressure or volume aldosterone it is concerned with the sodium ion metabolism ADH it is associated with the fluid regulation and uh, the renin it is produced by the kidneys it has no connection with the 
the blood pressure so hence uh, if we justify this question so we can say the option a is the correct one atrial natri uretic factor is responsible for lowering of blood pressure and volume the walls of atria of heart release this atrial natri uretic factor in response to any increase in the blood volume and blood pressure okay that is this anf it is secreted by the walls of atria of the heart in response to increase in the blood volume and blood pressure so a decrease in the blood pressure or volume will not cause the release of anf then question number 32 which of the following statement is correct and uh, statements are the descending limb of leucoph only is impermeable to water it is incorrect the ascending limb of leucoph only is permeable to water which is again incorrect the descending limb of leucoph only is, is permeable to electrolytes it is again incorrect the ascending limb of leucoph only is impermeable to water yes it is correct because we know that ascending limb of leucoph only don't allow the water to enter into it or pass through it then question number 33 the part of the nephron involved in the active absorption of the sodium ion we know that that is a pct proximal convoluted tubule that is primarily uh, responsible for uh, uh, active reabsorption of the sodium ion then the next question is the human urine is uh, usually acidic because it is because hydrogen ions are actively secreted into the glomerular filtrate option b is then question number 35 which of the following does not favor the formation of the large quantity of the dilute urine ran in atrial natri uretic factor alcohol or caffeine so in this question if we visualize uh, which of the following does not favor the formation of large quantity of dilute urine so we see the option a is correct renin because we know that uh, renin serve as an enzyme in the conversion of the plasma protein angiotensinogen into angiotensin and this uh, protein stimulate the adrenal cortex to produce aldosterone which act on the cell of the standing lip of loop of henle and, and increases the rate of reabsorption of the sodium ion reabsorption of the sodium ion brings about the uptake of an os osmotically equivalent amount of water and absorption of the sodium and water increases the blood volume and pressure in other words the ras system is uh, initiated through renin secreted by the kidney then question number 36 removal of proximal convoluted tubule from the nephron that is if we remove the pct what will happen the various options given are no change in the quality and quantity of urine no urine formation c more diluted urine and option d more concentrated urine so in this case we can say uh, option d is correct there would be the production of more concentrated urine about 65 percent of the glomerular filtrate is normally reabsorbed in the pct okay before reaching the loop of henley it absorbs glucose amino acid vitamins hormones sodium and potassium and chloride and phosphates bicarbonates water urea etc and if it is removed then more concentrated urine will uh, we formed with the high osmolarity so hence we can say option d is correct then question number 37 which of the following causes an increase in the sodium reabsorption in the dct so primarily uh, increase in the sodium reabsorption in the dct it is uh, caused by increase in the aldosterone because aldosterone is responsible for reabsorption of sodium then the next question is 38 the maximum amount of electrolytes and water 70 to 80 percent from the glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed in which part of the nephron so primarily we know that uh, uh, in case of uh, nephron the part which is responsible for reabsorption of 70 to 80 percent of the water yes that is uh, pct okay that is nearly we can say that 70 to 80 percent of electrolytes and water they are reabsorbed by pct area question number 39 a fall in the glomerular filtration rate activates that is when gfr rate uh, decreases it will activates 
JGA cells, that is the juxta glomerular cells of the nephrons to release ranin, and in turn, the ranin is the activator for RAS system and it causes increase in the GFR. Then, question number 40 which one of the following characteristic is common to both in humans as well as in the adult frog? In case of the humans and adult frog, the similarity which we visualize. Option A is given of four chambered heart, incorrect because we know that the frog heart is three chambered, whereas the humans they have four chambered heart. Then, internal fertilization again, it is not correct because we know that in case of the frog, external fertilization takes place. Then, nucleated RBC, not at all because in case of human beings, the RBC are without nucleus. D option, ureotelic mode of hesitation. Yes, it is correct. That is, the adult frog is ureotelic, likewise, uh, human beings they are also ureotelic. Question number 41 The pivot joint between atlas and axis is a category of option A, cartilaginous joint, option B, synovial joint, option C, saddle joint, option D, fibrous joint. The correct option is B, pivot, it is a kind of synovial joint. Then, question number 42 Which uh, out of uh, X pairs of ribs in the human only, Y pairs are the true ribs, select the option that correctly represent value of X and Y and provides their explanation. Uh, again, I am uh, stressing upon the question, out of X pair of ribs in the human only, Y pairs are the true ribs. It means that uh, Y are the uh, true ribs and how many true ribs are there? 7 pairs, only 14 ribs are the true ribs. And select the option that will correctly represent the value of x and y provided their explanation. And uh, in this case, we can see uh, option D is correct. X is equal to 12, y is equal to 7. Okay. X pairs of ribs in the human. True ribs are attached dorsally to the vertebral column and ventrally to the sternum. X is equal to 12, y is equal to 7. This is the correct one. Then name the iron responsible for unmasking of active sites for myosin 4 cross bridge activity during muscle contraction. And we know that it is uh, the calcium which is responsible for that. Calcium is responsible for muscle contraction. It binds to the troponin causing a change in its shape and position. Thus in turn alter the shape and position of tropomyosin to which the troponin binds. So, mainly it exposes the active sites over the actin molecules and uh, then it uh, stimulates the formation of actin myosin cross bridges. Calcium is responsible for that. Question number 44. Osteoporosis and acetylated disease of skeletal system may occur due to, it is due to the decreased level of estrogen in the aging. Osteoporosis is a disease in which uh, the bones they will progressively lose the calcium ion and they become weak and fragile and it is due to the decreased level of estrogen hormones secreted by the ovaries especially it is a disease of females the lack of relaxation between successive stimuli in the sustained muscle contraction is known as it is referred by the name of tetanus tetanus is a sustained contraction without any relaxing phase then question number 46, which of the following is not a function of the skeletal system? Uh, the function of the skeletal system, which is not the function, production of body heat, locomotion, production of erythrocytes, storage of minerals. So we know that uh, in this case, A option is correct, production of body heat. It is not the function of bones. Okay. Muscles are responsible for the production of body heat by their working. Question number 47, which of the following joints would allow no movements? We know that the fibrous joints, which are known as a fixed joint, they are also reported in the skull bones. They are immovable joints. So hence option C is correct. Question number 48, sliding filament theory can be best explained as uh, actin and myosin filaments don't shorten, but they rather slide past each other. Well, my when myofilaments slide past each other, myosin filament shorten while actin filament don't shorten. When myofilaments slide past each other, actin filament shorten while myosin filament don't shorten. 
Mactin and Mastin will have to shorten and slide past over each other. And we know that uh, option A is correct because according to the sliding filament theory, Lactin and Mastin filament, they slide past over each other and they don't show shortening or expansion. Okay, so option A is correct. Then question number 49, glenoid cavity articulates clavicle with the scapula, humerus with the scapula, clavicle with the acromion process and D option is the scapula with the acromion process. The option, correct option in this case is B because the glenoid cavity it is present in the scapula in which the head of the humerus bone get fitted and there is a formation of ball and shuffle joint between the two. Then question number 50. During muscle contraction in the humans, the sarcomere does not shorten, A band remains the same, A and A, H and I band shorten, D actin filament shorten. So primarily uh, we can say when the muscle contraction is there, the A band remains the same. Answer is A band remains the same because the A band is also known as an isotropic band or dark band. It is comprised of myosin filaments and there is no shortening of myosin. So thank you so much for your uh, kind uh, approach to this neat Brahmastra part 1 in the zoology section. We are also running uh, such important questions on the YouTube channel. You may visit the YouTube channel with the title Education World EW and if you like this uh, preparatory module for NEET examination 2021 kindly like and subscribe after. The part 2 zoology section will also be run in the next week in which uh, I will discuss many important questions which have the chances to come in the NEET examination so far. Thank you so much. Any query, any question, you must be uh, having the communication module through the YouTube channel. Thank you so much.